Hi guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be painting simple flowers using an easy layering technique. And as usual, I'm just going to begin by drawing out the petal shapes just so you know the different ways you can approach the painting. So basically it's up to you how you would like to shape the petals. I think the most basic shape is probably a leaf shape that you can either make thick or thin and you can also play around with the tip of the petals in which you can either make it sharp or a bit rounded. But as for me, I want to actually add a bit of frills at the top of the petals for a little bit of texture. So basically do whichever is comfortable for you to paint. Playing around with the shapes of the petals will also help give variety in the flowers as well. So the way I'm going to approach this is by painting the petals in a rotation to shape like a half circle. You can either start with two or three petals and then once the paint dries, I'm going to paint the petals in between. If you're a beginner, this might be something you want to practice first with pencil because sometimes getting the rotation of the petals might be a little bit tricky to make sure that there's an overall curve throughout the flower. When I paint this later, I also want the center to have a little bit of space in between so we can connect the middle with a thinner line to make it look lighter and not bulky. You can also choose how many petals you want to paint in each flower. I like to make mine either five or three, but if you need to fill in a space, you can also add more or less. You can draw it out as many times as needed until you're comfortable with the rotation, but I'm just going to move on to painting the petals. There's really no need to paint this in one stroke. I personally like to think of it as drawing, but I'm also filling in the space with my paint. At this point, you can also play around with the shape of the petals and decide which type you want to paint the flowers with. If you want to paint frilly ones like mine, I just basically start with the same shape as if we were to paint the simpler petals but I don't connect the top together instead I make the top uneven with the tip of my brush. I also like to start from the top and finish at the bottom most of the time because I prefer the bottom tip of my petals to collect most of the paint and for the top part of the petals to be a bit lighter in color. When painting the petals, it's important that the paint or water is well distributed instead of it puddling up in one spot because this will create blooms and hard edges as the paint collects in one area. So here, as you can see, the top part was already dry before the puddle. So the paint collects at the edge of the puddle, making the blooming effect, which I want to mostly avoid for this painting. So to avoid this, if there are any puddles in your painting or in your petals, what you can do is clean your brush and dry it with tissue or paper towel and then take the excess off with your dry brush so the paint distribution can be nice and even. If you want the petals to have a slight hard edge so the shapes are more distinct, you can put a bigger puddle of water as long as it's well distributed along the petal to make sure that not one area is drying and then wait a bit for some of the paint to settle on the paper then take off the excess after a while. It does take more patience but it's not totally necessary. I sometimes feel like it looks a bit too clean and perfect. That way I don't actually prefer it but it does really create a clear effect for the layers so just know that it's an option for you and if you really like the clear effect that it does take a bit of a longer time to produce. You can practice the layering by drawing a few petals at a time with a little bit of space in between them and I like to also add a thicker consistency paint at the bottom of each petal so there's a slight interest from the gradation of color it creates and you can either dry it out instantly using a hair dryer or you can practice other things like rotations while waiting for the paint to dry. Then once it dries I go back to the previous petals to paint on the layer on top and I I also like to do the same thing with the rotated version. I find that this technique works best with thin consistency paint for the petals. That way the color not only stays transparent, but sometimes when you do put thick paint, the paint dries on top of the paper and it's easier to disrupt the dry paint and you might reactivate it with a new layer. So just keep that in mind while you're painting and practicing. You might even want to try using the thick paint to see the limit of your brush and your paint. Another important point is that the layer should be completely dry before adding a new layer. If not, the edges might not be as even as the paint dries and slightly mingle with the damp paint from the previous layer, like this one as an example. 
Okay, so now I'm going to move on to painting them. I'm going to use a pink mixture by combining purple and pale orange, which is like a skin tone. And I'm also going to create a thick consistency orange by mixing in yellow and purple together for the darker tone at the center. However, feel free to pick your own color combination that you would like. I'm going to start by painting the petals using the pink mixture. I made a lot of the pink since I'm going to use this repeatedly and I also added a lot of water to make sure that the consistency is nice and light. I like to begin by painting three petals first. When I paint the flowers, I think the easiest way to approach it is by painting the middle petal first because that will determine where the flower is facing or the angle of the flower and after that you can add one on each side. Remember to always leave a little bit of space in between where you can connect the petals with thin lines using a different color. Here I'm going to move on to a different flower which is a little bit shorter and facing the opposite direction just so I can wait for the previous petals to dry but if you prefer to paint a full flower at a time you can also use a hair dryer to make sure that the petals are completely dry before adding on a new layer but as for me I like to actually jump to other things while I wait for something to dry so just pick the system that you prefer to work with. Then after I've painted those petals, since they're still slightly wet, I added the orange at the bottom of the petals. I'm still leaving them slightly separated so I can add more of them with the new layer. I find that this gives you more space for mistakes because sometimes the lines might be too close together and at the end it can make the flowers look too bulky. The top petals were slightly dry already so they didn't really travel much but I don't actually mind. However, if it bothers you, you can actually use very little water on your clean brush to soften the orange to blend with the pink a bit more if you would like to. While I wait for those flowers to dry, I also painted the third flower, but this time since the angle was sort of awkward, I also added a thin petal which looks slightly angled on the side. Then after I finished painting the third one, I felt like my first flower is now dry, so I used the pink again to add the second layer. I felt like the paint here was a little bit too dark, so if you're worried about this happening, you can actually just swatch your color mixture on a scrap paper first, but I was just a little bit lazy to do that. And after that, I used the orange to connect all of the petals together. You can also add extra lines, just make sure that they're thin enough so it still looks delicate. I'm only going to paint three flowers but obviously you can add more especially if you're really enjoying the process of painting it but here I'm just going to move on to painting the stems and the leaves. For the green I mixed in yellow with deep green and I also added a little bit of purple to mute the green slightly. Then I want to begin by painting where the stem is connecting with the flowers and I'm going to just paint small lines to represent tiny leaves and I'm just going to paint the same for all three flowers. Then I'm going to continue with the stem that I slightly bend as I paint. I always like to bend the stem slightly because I feel like it gives a better flow to the painting. Then once I've painted the stems, I'm going to paint simple leaves. You can also vary the leaf shapes if you would like to, but I'm going to keep this one nice and simple and easy. I just basically played around with the angle slightly and also the size, and I just distribute them around each flower. I think the only point that I'd like to mention is how I paint the leaves a bit further apart from the stem. That way I have a bit of space to add a thin line to connect the leaves and the stems together and this makes the leaves look more delicate even though they are quite large. So that's an easy way to lighten the weight of your composition and painting. I'm also going to add a tiny detail to the leaves by adding thin lines as the midrib. 
but as I painted the top one, the line was a little bit too thick, so I ended up painting the top half of it with a darker green instead, so it looks like there's a slight fold to the leaves. To create a darker green, you can add more deep green and purple in your mix, or just use a thicker consistency of the same color. I still had a bit of green left, so I ended up adding a new layer to a couple of leaves very lightly since the first layer was a little bit dark. And once I've added the last leaf, I'm pretty much done with the painting. This is just a simple technique with simple composition, but once you get used to painting them, you can create your own composition and even maybe use different colors for the flowers as well. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this very simple tutorial. Like usual, all of my social media links and tools I used are in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!